Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the books that I read for middle grade March. So hi, my name is Talia. I love books. I love bandanas. I am so glad you are at my channel today. Um, it's been a minute again since I have filmed. I had big plans for March, but as always, life got in the way of them all. But no matter, here we are. Um, back on track again. And um, I'm going to talk about the books I read for middle grade March. I read five books, um, one five star, three four stars, and one two star. And I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start with the two star and then kind of move up in my rankings from least favorite to most favorite. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So let's jump into it. Um, my least favorite book that I read for middle grade March was The Swift's A Dictionary of Scoundrels by Beth Lincoln. Um, and I give this a two star. Um, I just, this book just didn't, didn't jive with me. It wasn't bad. Um, we have this, this, um, main character, her name is Shenanigan, and, um, everyone in the family just kind of gets, like, when they're born, they get kind of randomly assigned a name from the dictionary. I can't remember how they did it. I think they literally just like opened the dictionary and went like, boom, that's your name. Um, so they get assigned names from the dictionary. So shenanigan is shenanigan. And the kind of like matriarch of the family tells them all that like, this is, um, you are, you are your name. Like this is what you are. So shenanigan is trying to figure out what, like kind of the whole overlying theme of the book is like, Am I what they say I am? Am I just a person who does shenanigans or do I have like more meaning and purpose? Okay, so that's like kind of the main theme of the book is like finding out who you really are inside. Okay, fine, great. But it was kind of just a hot mess to get there. Like, so there's like, they live in this big house that people have like, their family house, which people have been like building onto for, um, for many years. So there's all these different different um levels and sections and towers and tunnels and there's not really like a map of it all and there's all these secret hiding places that shenanigan can like go through and um there's no real like it's it's unclear kind of what the house actually looks like as i'm thinking about it in my head i don't know it was hard for me to figure out what was going on and then they have like this big family get together so all like the extended family comes and they're like okay now we're gonna have hunt for this treasure, this secret treasure that's somewhere on the property that's going to be like, that's been hidden for years. One of the old relatives like hid this treasure and every once in a while they have a reunion for everyone to get together and like find the treasure. Okay. So that's like the plot. Well then pretty early in the plot, there's like, there's like a murder that happens. Okay. So then everyone's like, oh, we have to find out the murderer and shenanigan and how like her band of little friends, relatives are trying to solve the murder. Right. Okay, great. So that's like the main plot going from there. Um, it's just kind of a mess. It's like they're kind of trying to solve this murder. No one's really ever looking for the treasure. But then there's like all these family games that are happening. Like they're like, okay, family game time. And like one of the games is like, let's stand and we'll insult each other and see who can insult the best. Like just randomly, like if a murder had happened, like would we then still be playing family games? And, like, if everyone's there to, like, hunt for this treasure that everyone's been looking for for so long, like, why is nobody hunting for this treasure? And, like, for me, like, none of the characters I really connected with, like, there was a couple secondary characters, like, one of the sisters. I was like, okay, she's okay. Um, Shenanigan I didn't really find to be that likable. And uh, uh, the whole thing, it was just kind of like, what is the point of this to me? So, yeah, I just didn't like it. I liked parts of it. Like, the, there was some great, like, one-liners. And I can't remember any of them right now. But there was some things, like, that she said or another character would say. But I was like, that's hilarious. Um, and a couple of the little, like, things that happened in their family. I was like, okay, that's really funny. But it was, like, trying too hard to be funny and trying too hard to be serious. And trying too hard to be, like, a mystery. And, like, for me, it was just all kind of, like, a big mashup of meh. So, um, I did read this with Chad, the Mad Chatter and Kelly um, from Kelly Reads A Lot and Vidanya from Vidanya Silver Scribe. I think they all, well, I know, actually, no, Kelly didn't read this one with us. 
Did she? Gosh, I can't remember. This was the first one I read in March, so it's been a while. I don't know. I'll double check and put for sure in the comments below who read this book with me. I know Chatty did and Chatty liked it. I think Vidanya didn't like it. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't like it. That's the end of that. Okay, so that was the only book I really didn't like. The rest of the books I liked, and we'll go from order in which I liked next. Okay, so the one I liked next most, can't even talk anymore. Um, at least the sun's out today. The sun, you guys, it is a long, cold, rainy winter here in the Pacific Northwest. And when the sun comes out, I feel like I am alive again, if that makes sense. And see, let me just say, seasonal affective disorder is a real thing. It's real. I'm telling you. I don't know why, but my brain, mind, body, and soul function better when there is sun and it's bright and when it's not raining all the time. And when it is raining and sad and cold and dark all the time, I just don't function as well. So it is what it is. We're coming back around. Summer's coming. Um, I digress. Okay, so the next one I read it was actually an audiobook, and this was the group read for middle grade March. So I did do the group read. I didn't participate in like any of the comments or a live show or anything, but I did read it. Um, so Mona Lisa Vanishes by Nicholas Day was the next one I read, and this was an audiobook. Um, so this is a story basically about the Mona Lisa and how she became very, very famous when she was stolen in 1911. So this was really interesting actually, because I knew nothing about the Mona Lisa except for obviously what she looked like. She's a picture, um, this painting that was in Paris, very far away from where I live. I've never really had any desire to go see her or know much more about her. Um, but since this book combined two of my favorite genres, middle grade, and nonfiction, I was like, we gotta give this a try. Um, and I really, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, very, um, I learned a lot about the history of the Mona Lisa, how Leonardo da Vinci painted her, and who the subject was that sat for the painting, and how this painting was a, a good painting, and a, a known painting in Paris at the time when it was all the time that it was in the Louvre um, prior to its theft, but it really became very famous when it was stolen in 1911. So um, it kind of went through the process of how it got stolen and how it was eventually returned and the hot mess of the police at the time trying to figure out um, who did it. Um, and really like had kind of had this overlying theme throughout the book is that people want like the most dramatic story because there were so many stories that were created about how she was stolen by by like very rich Americans or or you know gangs and like there was this big plot to like steal her and like how she had to be in a different country and they were searching everywhere except for basically like right under their noses and how people just want the bigger story and the police at the time were like refused to believe that it was like as simple as it actually was so um and how all this led to the Mona Lisa becoming very famous. So I will say, after reading this book, I definitely have much more curiosity about the Mona Lisa. And I think if I'm ever in Paris, I'll definitely stop by and give her a viewing. Um, okay, so the next one that I liked in order of likedness. Likedness? Oh my gosh. Okay, so the next book on my ranking of four stars was Simon Sort of Says um, by Aaron Bow. This is my first of my uh, tearjerker books. I actually read two middle grade books that are very intense. So I will say this, I really enjoyed this book. If you are looking for books to recommend to your younger um, middle graders, I would not pick this one. This one covers um, our main character, Simon. He has survived a school shooting and he's basically the only survivor in his class so um shooter basically came in whole class was um executed and he was the only one to survive um so very intense topics and throughout this book there's a lot of flashbacks to that um not nothing too like gory gory or like 
detailed, but, but telling basically what he saw, if that makes sense and what the experience was like for him. Um, and he's suffering from like severe post-traumatic stress, um, about the situation. So he and his family have moved to this new town in the middle of nowhere where there's no, um, no internet access. Um, and the reason there's no internet access is because there's this big like satellite thing set up where they're trying to detect, um, um, like, like, sounds from outer space and they're trying to find out if there's extraterrestrial life there so um it's this funny little town like half of them are just like country bumpkins and half of them are like scientists like searching for life out in the universe so um there's quite a, a combination of characters in this book and he ends up enrolling in a new school and trying to make friends and process his grief and we kind of go from there um so i really liked it i thought it was a sweet story um i again intense like there's moments where you're just like oh my gosh like to be to be this child I think a lot of the times when we think about school shootings like you think about the families of the ones that lost their kids but also it's important to think about the survivors because those kids have experienced things that like no one should ever have to see or feel or like um ever go through so yeah enjoyed it um thought it was very educational yeah it was a good one definitely definitely recommend. Um, okay. Next I read, so this is like the runner up to the favorite of the month. This is still a four star keeper of the lost cities by Shannon messenger. I just really loved this. I thought it was really fun, like enjoyable fantasy read. Um, so our main character, Sophie Foster, she is a telepath. She's 12 years old. She's a telepath. Since she was five, she's always been able to like hear, um, whatever anyone's thinking around her. Um, really early in the book, people approach her, this kid named Fitz approaches her and is like, hey, you need to come with me. I got to tell you something. And she finds out that she is actually an elf. And there's all these other mystical worlds and everything she knows is basically a lie. And she has to go live with this elf in this elf lands. Um, but elves aren't like elves like you'd picture in like our typical fairy tales. They're just like normal people, but they are elves and they have magical abilities but they don't think it's magic it's just like how the universe works and humans are like too stupid to understand um so <laughs> there's a lot of things wrong with this plot and a lot of things I was like this doesn't make any sense but overall I would say I really liked it um I thought the characters were likable I thought it was a perfect amount of like adventure and magic and mystery and there's like sadness woven in because she like has to go through a process of like missing her family which she has grown up with. Um, I will say the thing I really did not like, so there was one thing I did not like at all. And it was like the, like, I feel like the, the cringe, um, romance shouldn't start until YA novels. And this is very much a middle grade novel, like written middle grade topics, middle grade, like just felt middle grade. But then it was like, there was a lot of like, oh, he looked at me and I blushed. He like, a lot <laughs> okay like at least 15 times like someone was like blushing or like awkwardly looking at someone and I'm like okay like 12 13 like that is kind of like when that's happening but like don't write about it because when you're writing for middle grade it's designed more for like 8 to 12 year olds and I'm like don't write about it let the cringe romance start in the YA you know like that was like oh <laughs> but I liked it enough to still give it a four star. Um, I actually like the day after I finished it, I went and I got the second book. So it's on my shelf back there somewhere. Um, cause I do want to continue pretty quickly. It's a pretty thick one. So I don't want to forget like all the details that happened. Cause there is quite a bunch of, um, of like adventure in it. Um, so yeah, I just thought it was fun. Like definitely bugged me at times. Another thing was like, like she goes to this world and like no one will tell her anything like no one will give her any information about why he, she's there and her past and it's like kind of one of those stories where the kids are trying to like figure it out like she's trying to figure it out and the adults are like don't worry we got this everything's fine and it's like everything's not fine um but throughout the book you do get more bits and pieces and it does kind of move um move in the direction I wanted it to move and definitely leaves you on a cliffhanger and um we'll see where the series goes i think there's at least 10 books in the series so who knows when i'll get through all of that if i ever will um continue all the way but definitely recommend i thought um i thought it was pretty decent okay it's time 
for my favorite book of middle grade March. Um, and this one, actually, I read a physical copy. The library wanted it back because someone else had a hold on it, so I don't have it anymore. I probably will buy a copy at some point because I really would like to have it on my shelves. Um, but this is The Probability of Everything by Sarah Everett. And um, this book, at one point when I was reading this book, I literally had to like stand up and pace around. Like I had such a like strong reaction to, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? Um, so the probability of everything is about a girl and she um, really likes probability. Like she likes knowing the probability you'll get struck by lightning and the probability that it'll be sunny tomorrow and the probability just about all these different things okay so she is living her life and um suddenly like this news the like she's with her family in her house and this message comes on the tv that an asteroid is coming towards the earth and there's like an 83 percent chance of it hitting the earth and um and obviously that's very shocking because she knows that that probability is not very good for them. Um, and it kind of goes from there and tells the story of basically like it's one week until the asteroid is going to hit. And it goes through and tells the process of her going through this basically last week of her life, which she assumes is going to be the last week of her life because of the probability of this happening. Um, and just the way that the media reacts and the way that her family reacts and the way how um, families react differently. Um, and that's all I'm going to say. And if you've read this book, you know, you know, right? What got me going like, oh my gosh. And I can't say any more about it at this time. But let me just say it like, it was really well done. And, and I didn't think it was really well done until I got to the end. Like when you're reading it, you're kind of like, is this good? Is this not? And then you're like, oh yeah, this is really good. Um, so that's all I can say. The probability of everything. Um, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. Really liked it. Definitely recommend. Again, very intense. We're talking about intense topics here. So I would not let your, like, I don't know at what age I will let my kids read this one. Um, not when they're eight, that's for sure. My daughter is six now. She will not be ready um, in a couple of years. Like, it would definitely older grade, middle graders for sure on that one. But adults, check it out at your library. Um, purchase a copy because it was really, um, it was crazy. It was a good one. Okay, that's all. I could have read more for Middle Grade March. I actually, the last one I finished was The Mona Lisa Vanishes, and I finished that on March 25th. Um, but I was just feeling a little bit middle grade burned out. So the ones I didn't get to, hang on a sec. So I did not get to Hollow Pox. I did not get to The Girl from Earth's End, unfortunately. So, um, so that's too bad, but okay, we'll get to them another time. Um, I started reading a couple others, I actually finished another and I'm in the middle of a couple other books right now. So we will just save those for another day. Um, how was your middle grade March? Did you read any middle, middle grade? Did you participate? Um, have you read any of these? Do you plan to after these recommendations? Um, let me know in the comments below. And I hope you're doing well wherever you are. I hope you're having a sunny day like I am see like birds out there. It's beautiful. Um, I hope you're having a good day wherever you are. I hope you take some time today to read a good book or two. And if you are having a bad hair day, just wear a bandana. Bye.